Welcome to the Competitive Review, where unlike my competition, my opinions are facts. I'm Kanjin, and this is Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic is talked about so exhaustively. So let's, instead of an intro, let's just have a ban list, okay? The following phrases are banned. Blue Blur. Back in the 90s, Sonic, on a Nintendo console, I used to think the game was good. But now that I've grown up, I think the game is bad. Any sarcastic jokes about blast processing, and anything related to Tails or Eggman. I'm not interested in the success of their concepts, no one else really is either, so while I will touch upon their gameplay styles, it will be very brief. What I'm primarily interested in is analyzing Sonic, to see how he holds up by himself. And that is why for this review, and this is not a joke, I have played every single Sonic game that has come before Sonic Adventure 2 to have the most excruciating amount of context possible. I played the Genesis games, I played the fucking Sonic Garfield game, I played the Wheel of Fortune game, I played fucking Shadow Play Soccer on the Tiger Electronics McDonald's toy, I played the Leapster Sonic, okay? That out of the way, let's begin. The story begins with arguably the most crucial aspect, Gun, who is for all intents and purposes, the world's military. Eggman's grandfather, Gerald Robotnik, worked on a top secret weapon known only as Project Shadow, the ultimate life form, which was sealed away 50 years ago on one of Gun's bases, Prison Island. After obtaining his grandfather's diary and downloading some animated GIFs of explosions, Dr. Eggman breaks into Prison Island to try and steal Project Shadow, only to discover what I'm sure you assumed, Project Shadow is Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow tells Eggman that in exchange for releasing him, he will grant Eggman one wish. Eggman, understandably, completely ignores Shadow's wish bullshit while a guard robot finally reaches him. Shadow destroys the boss effortlessly, and Eggman is like, now about that wish thing, to which Shadow responds, bring more chaos emeralds, which is hilarious. Hey Eggman, I'll grant you a wish, but first you gotta grant my wish first. <laughs> Shadow tells Eggman to meet him at the abandoned space colony and then leaves. Meanwhile, in a fucking helicopter, Sonic has been arrested by Gun, the world's military. Why? Because he was mistaken for Shadow, which is fucking impossible, because Gun's only encounter with Shadow was on Prison Island, where they knew damn well he isn't Sonic, because he's been locked up there for 50 years. Things get heated when Sonic does his patented kill everyone on board and jump out the window shtick. The helicopter pilot tells all the dead people inside of the helicopter to go get Sonic, who is now on top of the helicopter outside of it. Sonic grabs a piece of a helicopter and then says something like, Talk about low budget games, no quality control, I'm out of here. I like Mario better, and then jumps off. He runs around in Ape Escape Zone for six hours until he runs into Shadow, who, according to an inebriated voice acting alliance user doing their best British accent, just got done stealing a Chaos Emerald from a fucking bank. Also worth noting, they have a complete close up of Shadow's face but they still somehow think that Knuckles is the culprit. Why does Shadow do these things? Maria. Yeah, remember that space colony I mentioned before? Shadow was created there and lived with Professor Gerald's granddaughter, Maria. Shadow and Maria were very close, but that was turned upside down when Gunn, the ones who funded Project Shadow, came to the Ark and killed everyone aboard, including Maria. Before she succumbs to her gunshot wound, she puts Shadow in an escape pod and with her dying breath says, Shadow! Do it for me! Which he interprets as killer and just shoot them in the fucking face. With the emerald he stole, Shadow uses chaos control, an ability that only he is capable of using, which allows him to teleport away while Sonic gets arrested by Gun again. Meanwhile, at Eggman's secret pyramid base, Ruse the Bat, a jewel thief government spy, is in the middle of her mission to follow Eggman and discovers his teleporter, whose coordinates have been set to the space colony arc. Curious, she goes up there to see what he's up to. Eggman meets with Shadow, who reveals to him a secret weapon of mass destruction developed aboard the Ark, the Eclipse Cannon, a giant laser beam that can destroy planets. It needs all seven Chaos Emeralds to reach full power, and so they both scheme to nab them all until Rouge intervenes, demanding to be a part of the plan in exchange for her Chaos Emerald and intel. They agree, and all three of them return to Prison Island to rob the Emeralds from Gun. Rouge infiltrates Security Hall, Shadow plants explosives over the island, and Eggman distracts the guards. Tails is also on his way to Prison Island because that's where Sonic is locked up, and he's ready to bust him out. And so is Amy, apparently, because Amy is also here. Sonic, understandably, asks Amy how she got here, 
To which she replies, well, if you gotta know, I caught a ride with Tibbs, even though by every conceivable metric, that is fucking impossible. She then reveals she has a key card that can open Sonic's jail cell, which, if you asked her where she got it, I assume would respond to the tune of, well, if you gotta know, some blind guy was guarding it, so I disguised myself and nabbed it undetected. Amy then says something about seeing a black hedgehog, which, let's be honest, is just a litmus test for Let's Players or streamers. If the black hedgehog line comes up and they respond with something like, <laughs> that's racist, find a firearm and gun them down. Sonic then escapes Prison Island and runs into Shadow. Sonic calls Shadow a fake gamer girl and Shadow retorts by slut-shaming Sonic and then they fight and it sucks and Eggman's like, <gasps> ooh, wow, the island's gonna blow up, buddy. You better get your fucking shit out of there ASAP, pal. Sonic and friends escape, but Shadow has to go back and save Rouge, who is trapped in a vault by a security guard pilot. Shadow uses Chaos Control, which makes sense since he's the only character that can use Chaos Control, to warp Rouge out of the island. Shadow then has a flashback where it's explained that Professor Gerald's purpose in life is to benefit all of mankind with his work, or as Shadow so eloquently states, making people happy through the power of science. Sonic and friends regroup just in time to witness Eggman threatening the whole Earth with the Eclipse Cannon, using six of the seven emeralds. He blows the fucking moon in half and explains that if everyone on Earth doesn't donate to his Kickstarter, he will kill himself. Tails, in response to this, finds the president's limousine and tracks the video to the space colony. So Sonic and friends infiltrate Eggman's base and steal one of his spare rocket ships. They arrive at the space colony, and while discussing how to destroy the cannon, Tails reveals that he has built a fake Chaos Emerald that's weaker than the real emeralds, and will explode when placed in the cannon. Also, Amy is here too. Now you're probably thinking, that's pretty irresponsible. Eggman finds Amy and holds her at gunpoint, telling Sonic to give up the emerald in exchange for her life. Sonic, thinking he can fool Eggman with the fake emerald, agrees. Turns out Eggman already knew, however, and traps Sonic in a capsule, leading to one of the best scenes in the game. You thought you could trick me with that fake emerald, didn't you? So, how did you know it wasn't the real world? Tails! <laughs> because you just told me, Fox Boy. fucking butt scrub. Sonic tells Tails to finish the job and he is launched into space where he explodes. Which is what I would have said if Sonic didn't come up with a brilliant plan at the last moment. Use chaos control to escape with the fake emerald. Jesus fucking Christ. With only like 10 minutes left before the cannon fires, Sonic makes a mad dash to the eclipse cannon hoping to open palm slam the fake emerald into it to save the day. While this is going on, Rouge is ousted as a government spy by Shadow, with her true mission being to get info on Project Shadow and nab all the emeralds in the process. Shadow receives orders from Eggman to stop Sonic, and tells Rouge, just don't take the fucking emeralds, okay? And Rouge doesn't. She doesn't take them. Sonic and Shadow meet, now with only five minutes until the cannon fires again. Now, I don't care who you are, this whole sequence is fucking badass. Before this is over, I'll show you the true power of Sonic beats Shadow and stops the cannon, but Eggman, using his sneaky technique, has stolen the last Chaos Emerald and fully powers up the cannon. Upon doing so, however, we reveal the ultimate fuckness of the story. Gerald has actually programmed the Ark to crash into the Earth and kill everyone when all seven emeralds are collected, which is revealed when the video of his execution is played. How did this execution video reach the Ark? Well, if you gotta know, it caught a ride with Tails. With the exception of Shadow, nobody was aware of Gerald's secret plan, including Eggman. So everyone teams up to stop the Ark from falling. Everyone except Shadow, who doesn't want to help because it was all part of his plan. Until Amy begs him to help, of course, which is when Shadow remembers his super secret memory of remembering, where it's revealed that, surprise, surprise, Maria didn't want Shadow to fucking ass everyone. Shadow says he has to keep his true promise to Maria and Amy, despite the fact that he literally never at any point in the story promises her anything. This is the first time he says a word to her, but it's, just, you know, what team makes it to Cannon's core, where they are stopped by Gerald Robotnik's backup plan, the prototype of the ultimate life form, the bio lizard. I assume I don't need to explain what's wrong here. Shadow beats the bio lizard, but it uses chaos control to merge with the colony to keep it falling. Sonic and Shadow use the emeralds to turn super and defeat it, use big chaos control to warp the colony to a safe location, and then Shadow dies. They mourn Shadow, and the game is over. Oh my fucking god. Why is Sonic mistaken for Shadow? I used to chalk this up to how many freaks of nature like Sonic could possibly be running around. But Gun knows who the fuck Shadow is. Why is Knuckles here? I'm sure you noticed I didn't mention him at all in the plot synopsis. That's because 3,000 miles away- I can't see a thing, but it's around somewhere. I'm gonna hold my head cause I have no fear. Why does Rouge have to sneak into Gun's security hall? She works for the government. Why does Amy say she caught a ride with Tails? How can you miss something like that? How 
to Sonic use Chaos Control, an ability he's never fucking used before, with a fake Chaos Emerald? When Shadow leaves Rouge alone with the Emeralds, why on earth does she not take them? The planet is going to be destroyed because, well, man, I wouldn't want to piss off Shadow. How does Gerald's Doomsday program make it to the Ark? Or was the Ark always programmed to destroy Earth? If so, what is all this benefit of mankind bullshit? Why is the Bio Lizard this 300 ton behemoth while Shadow is a damn three foot hedgehog? Why is Shadow a hedgehog in the first place? He was created before Sonic even fucking existed. Why does Shadow die after using Chaos Control? They were both in super form. Did the game really need added dramatic bullshit? This story is such a stupid fucking myth, which is what I would have said if I was a basic bitch reviewer. I was pretending to hate the story as a ruse to lure stupid hipsters into my fucking death trap. What if I told you that Sonic Adventure 2 has no plot holes? What if I told you that Sonic Adventure 2 has the best story of any Sonic game? In order to properly frame this theory, it's important to think of Sonic Team's position at the time. The writing was on the wall for Sega. Sonic Adventure 2 would be the last Sonic game on their console before they bit the dust, and they were very much aware of this. This would be Sonic Team's last true effort for a character whom they may never touch again. As such, I will only be using material from Sonic Adventure 2 and before, rather than later games to back up my claims. Let's start from the top. Why is Sonic mistaken for Shadow? The answer is, he isn't. Gun knows full well that Sonic isn't Shadow. This is a cover-up operation by Gun to prevent civilians from ever discovering Project Shadow. They already killed everyone aboard the Ark to cover it up 50 years ago. This is just them continuing where they left off. Shadow even alludes to the possibility in the Japanese recap of Radical Highway. So, why does Rouge need to infiltrate Gun's base if she works for the government? This is misdirection. In the newer games, it's established that she works for Gun. This, however, is never established in Sonic Adventure 2. She works for the President. The President is ultimately in charge of Gun, but in the case of what transpires in Sonic Adventure 2, that doesn't mean a damn thing. Why? Because Gun is actively working against the President. Consider Rouge's only two missions from the President in the game. Monitor Eggman's actions and retrieve data on Project Shadow. In the recap of the Dry Lagoon stage, she mentions placing a tracker on Eggman's Egomatic hovercraft. But as we see in Eggman's mech stage following it, his base is swarming with gun robots sent to destroy him. Why would the president try to kill Eggman while monitoring him? Why would she eventually need to retrieve data on Project Shadow if Gun knows everything there is to know about the project? Because Ruse works for the president, and Gun works alone. That's why the president okays the collateral of bombing Gun's base. For them, it kills two birds with one stone, damaging their resource pool to hinder their cover-up. It also explains why Rouge must sneak into Security Hall and is powerless to escape the vault. She can't tell them who she works for. They would gun her down on the spot. Anti-gun sentiment is seen in Rouge's very first stage, where two gun robots are bullying a turtle. So why does Rouge not take the emeralds when given ample chance? Because the truth is, with her knowledge of the Ark, the proper choice would be to leave them. Not only does Eggman give Rouge the password to control the Space Colony's console, the final story establishes that the President is monitoring the Ark and feeding her information. It is also established that the cannon is minutes away from firing and that the emeralds at this stage merely affect its charging speed. If she took the emeralds, where would she go? Back to Earth, currently in the crosshairs of the Eclipse Cannon? Rouge is present when Eggman tells Shadow that someone is heading off to the Eclipse Cannon and that someone has located the seventh emerald. Rouge, having the very same access Eggman did to discover the fake emerald, knows whoever's approaching the cannon has it, and at that moment all the pieces fit together. Eggman will return to add the seventh emerald while Sonic destroys the cannon, making the emerald's destructive power useless. She would then simply swipe all seven and make her getaway. She is not present when Eggman adds the last emerald because she is establishing contact with the president somewhere in the Ark. This was established after Eggman threatens Earth with the test fire. The president's secretary mentions that all satellite communications are down, but after the president speaks with Eggman, she exclaims, Mr. President, we are receiving a signal from our agent. The same time in the dark story, Eggman says something very strange to Rouge. Where in the world have you been? She's been establishing contact with the president, just as she does right before Eggman inserts the final emerald. The plan ultimately fails because unbeknownst to everyone, the Ark was reprogrammed to crash into the Earth when all seven emeralds were collected. But then you must ask, how then does Professor Gerald reprogram the Ark? It was in response to gun killing Maria. So the answer is, he didn't. OBJECTION!
beginning of the game, reprograms the Space Colony Ark. Shadow the Hedgehog leaves Eggman at Prison Island to go to the Space Colony Ark long before anyone else attempts to reach it, and he only brings one thing, Gerald Robotnik's execution tape. Although Gerald Robotnik never had the opportunity to reprogram the Ark, he was able to reprogram one final creation, Shadow. Rouge heavily implies that this is what happened, and Gerald confirms he did so in his diary, which explains Shadow's warped interpretation of Maria's final request. So why does he bring it? Because the formula for the Doomsday Plot is written clear as day on the wall. With this information, Shadow reprograms the Ark, and the stage is set for Sonic vs. the Ultimate Life Form. But... Who is the ultimate life form? You would assume it's Shadow, it's practically his catchphrase, but you're left with the seemingly unexplainable biolizard. How do you go from a giant lizard to a hedgehog? It's a simple answer, because the ultimate life form is Sonic the Hedgehog. Gerald Robotnik is nothing more than a man of science, and in the Sonic universe, the only explanation is that Sonic's very being is a scientific absolute, that if you pursue the concept of ultimate life, you will inevitably end up with a creature similar to Sonic, because Sonic fulfills every standard of ultimate life. So then what is the standard for ultimate life in the Sonic universe? Undoubtedly, it must be the ability to control chaos energy. From the very first prototype of the Biolizard, Gerald Robotnik's creations were given the ability to utilize the Chaos Emeralds with the Chaos Control ability. Sonic, however, never needed Chaos Control to utilize the Emeralds. He didn't even know what it was until he saw Shadow perform it. He only needed one thing. Rings. Rings which the Sega Genesis games will confirm are intrinsically linked to the Chaos Emeralds. Rings that only give off their full power with Sonic's touch. Rings that have had Sonic perform Chaos Control before the concept was even introduced to him. Knuckles and Tails were able to come close, but neither of them were able to utilize the Chaos Energy the way Sonic can, and have not been able to since. That's why, despite seeing Chaos Control but once, he was able to utilize a fake Emerald to perform it. He has unmatched control over Chaos Energy. Which brings me to my next point. Many have asked why Sonic was able to use Chaos Control despite never using it. So I would pose, why was Shadow able to maintain a super form despite never even witnessing it? And the answer is he doesn't, he can't. Throughout the entire fight, Sonic is constantly asking Shadow if he's okay, because Shadow is unable to keep up with Sonic's ability to utilize the rings for Chaos Energy. He comes close but falls short. The ultimate life form lives and Shadow dies. In the very final scene of Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic is seen contemplating the concept of an ultimate life form, and that line right there paints the whole game in a new light. Themes of legacy and change are prevalent throughout the entire experience. When Eggman storms Prison Island, he is after the work of his grandfather to finish what he started until the malevolence of his true intentions is too much for even Eggman to accept. Gun continuing their bloodbath cover-up out of fear of Project Shadow, only to be saved by him in the end. Shadow carrying out his mission to avenge Maria from decades past, only to realize it was never what she wanted. Sonic telling Tails to defeat Eggman for him before his supposed execution. Eggman telling Shadow to finish the job if he is killed. It's all aptly fitting for a game that is meant to be the last of its kind, and obscenely ironic from a company who is now hanging on the edge of tomorrow from the works of yesterday. There's a face searching for